You couldn't cut a promo with a dictionary and a knife. Man, I think this thong I'm wearing is way too tight. But if it ain't tight, it ain't right. Two wrongs don't make a right. Might makes right. But I'm confused because I still don't know the difference between a stalagmite and a stalactite. This is Mark Belton, Super Training TV Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project, brought to you by Bodybuilding.com and BSN. The question for today is a very big one, and this one's from Bodybuilding.com. It's a very broad and very big question. And sometimes when you get big and when you get to the basics and you try to keep things simple, you end up talking for 9,000 hours because uh, simplifying this stuff and boiling it down to its finest points can be sometimes very difficult. The question is, I'm a newbie. What do I do? How do I power lift? How do I program? Should I do west side? Should I do the cube? Should I do this method? Should I do that method? And here is the answer. And this is universal from many coaches around the world. And they're gonna tell you the same thing. If you're really new, if you just started to engage in physical exercise, in resistance training, then you need a base. And that base does not have to be built off of strictly doing powerlifting. However, you're gonna wanna use, maybe I should tilt this this way a little bit more, get that logo in there. There we go. Or maybe I should just do this. Just shaved my head, why not? Show it off, it's all sheared up. <clears throat> what you can do is, you can simply go to the gym and train. Learn some different pieces of equipment. Watch other people lift. Try to watch someone who's big. Try to watch someone who's strong. Try to go to a powerlifting meet. Try to go to an Olympic lifting contest. Try to find and try to rub elbows with people that are good and with people that are strong. Um, but use some of the powerlifting movements uh, so that you know them and so that you can get used to them. You can get accustomed to them and realize you can keep those in your back po pocket. You're going to continue to learn those uh, as you move along. But things like lat pull downs, things like pull ups, things like push ups, body weight exercises, lunges, there's many different exercises to get into and there's many different things to grasp. But let's just keep it simple and let me just give you a rundown of a couple exercises that I think are extremely effective. For upper body we have bench press. Any sort of pressing is going to be great. Realize that a bench press is not just an upper body movement, it's going to take the use of your entire body. Learn how to bench press. Go in there and lift kind of light. You don't have to bench press like a power lifter on day one of one. Go in there and just do these movements for sets of 10, maybe three or four sets of 10. Very common, keep the weights light. Your last rep should look like your first. Your last rep should look like your first. And if it doesn't, then take some weight off. Three to four sets of 10. Bench press, great upper body exercise. Military press. You could do it with dumbbells or you can do it with a barbell. I prefer to do uh, overhead pressing work standing, which I don't really do a whole lot of overhead pressing work anymore because I'm just grizzled and old, but overhead presses are fantastic to do. Other exercises that you have for the upper body would be any sort of pull-up or chin-up. Those are great exercises. I do not suggest uh, learning how to kip uh, like they do in the CrossFit world. That's, that's, a, that's an okay movement. That's fine if you want to learn that down the road. But I'm just talking about for a beginner, for someone who's new. Uh, learn some of the basics, learn how to do things the right way, maybe even get on a machine that gives you a little assistance or utilize a band that is going to give you a little bit of assistance on those pull-ups. You also have things like a bent over row. Bent over row is going to work your lats slash back. I guess I should have said this earlier. Bench press is going to work your chest, shoulders and triceps. Overhead pressing is going to get your shoulders and your triceps. Pull-ups and chin-ups are going to get your lats and your biceps. Okay, now let's just kind of move on to lower body. There's, there's still a lot of upper body exercises to do, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to give you some of the very, very basic movements. Uh, there's a, about three for uh, upper body. Or let's just throw a curl in there, because everyone needs a curl, right? Let's throw a curl in there, balance things out a little bit. Um, just a barbell curl, dumbbell curl, any sort of curl. Again, three sets of ten, your last rep should look like your first rep. 
For lower body, uh, we have we have a squat, we have a deadlift. Squats are going to work your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes. Deadlifts are going to work all those same muscles, and obviously it's going to work your lower back tremendously. Um, but these exercises are going to be great exercises for anything that you're doing, whether you're doing sports or whether you're trying to kick ass in life. Uh, they're great movements. They can teach you uh, a lot of things about your body. They can be quite challenging. They can give you a great workout. They can help you to increase muscle mass throughout your entire body, which will then in turn help you burn more calories, which in then will in turn uh, allow you to burn more calories all the time, raising your metabolism, keeping you less fatterist as you get older. Other exercises for lower body, you got leg press. You got leg extensions, you got leg curls. You got some coaches out there who have a fit about leg extensions and leg curls and how you should be doing a glute ham raise and these different things. Just do the basics for now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the cam and uh, you know what it's gonna do to your kneecap and so on. If it hurts, then don't do it because that's the great thing about exercise. There's a lot of different things you can do. If you have pain on day one of one, you're gonna be in for it. So let's not uh let's not deal with a lot of pain in the beginning let's avoid that and uh, we're gonna do about three sets of ten of each movement you can do one upper body day um and one lower body day per week then you can start to kind of adjust and add in more stuff later on but it'd be good to do one day where you're doing a bench one day where you're doing a squat or one day where you're doing a deadlift type movement but you can you want to take some of those movements and you want to when you're done with those movements, you want to utilize some of the assistance movements. That's where the curls would come in and lat pull downs and uh, lateral raises and some of the other small movements that we didn't really get a chance to talk to here about right here. Um, a couple other exercises that are great for the lower body you have lunges. Any form of a lunge is going to be a great movement. It's not only going to work your hamstrings and your quads, but it's also going to stretch your hip. It's also just a very healthy movement. In lifting weights, we oftentimes do not have the opportunity to move around a whole lot. So a walking lunge can be fantastic. Another great exercise that I would suggest to anybody who's new out there uh, is a farmer's walk. You know, you don't really hear people, it kind of flies under the radar for some reason. It's a fantastic ex exercise. Uh, a farmer's walk, just grab any dumbbells, whatever suffices for your strength level. Uh, 40 pounds, 60 pounds, 100 pounds, depending on how strong you are, and just walk with those bad boys. You've seen them do it on uh, Biggest Loser even. That's another great movement. Works your grip, works your arms, works your cardiovascular system as well. If you're new and you're trying to get big, um, you're going to want to eat a lot. <laughs> you don't want to eat often. I guess if you're big or if you're trying to get lean, some of the dieting is somewhat similar in terms of you want to have small, frequent meals throughout the entire day. Maybe not so small if you're trying to get big, but you want to have frequent meals throughout the day. We're looking to get about six meals a day. Very simple strategy. Uh, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Approximately the same in carbohydrates. If you're trying to gain size, you might want to double those carbohydrates and maybe even slightly increase the amount of protein that I just recommended. And for your fats, you're going to want to have your fats be about half of whatever your protein intake is. Oftentimes, you want to have, you want to have the fats even lower than that, probably more to the to tone of 25 to 30%. But just to uh, make it less complicated, I'm about 260 pounds, so I would have about 260 grams of carbs, 260 grams of protein, and about 130 grams of fat per day trying to lean out I'd pull that fat down a little bit uh, might increase the protein uh, just just a little bit from there maybe possibly increase the carbs but I'm a big big boy so you wouldn't want to follow that exactly um, but one to one ratio uh, on protein and carbohydrates and then about half of that in fats would be a good start see how your body reacts to it break that up into small meals throughout the entire day and last but not least make sure that you are consistent be consistently consistent and be very persistent and make sure that you're getting your butt to the gym get off your couch get off your ass make sure you're going in there and working hard putting um 
a lot of effort into each and every rep and each and every set. Learn your craft, learn your trade, learn how to do the list properly, stay safe, eat, sleep, and grow. Make sure that you're getting your rest. Strength is never a weakness, and that is it from supertraining.tv and bodybuilding.com.